Guys, I've reported on numerous Tesla Model 3s and of course older Tesla's Model S's that are still running on the original motors, the original battery, um, the original everything except for tires. In some cases, the original brakes that have done well over 400,000 miles. I reported on that over the last six months and it seems as though the mainstream media are finally starting to catch on to this phenomenon. In fact, the Atlantic said electric cars could last nearly forever if car companies will actually let them. Here's the question. Are car companies intentionally sabotaging EVs? Because if you buy one, you might never need to buy another one again. And that's not going to work for a consumer business. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. In April, a group of people in a red Tesla driving through the Moroccan desert were glued to the odometer on the car's giant touchscreen. Two million, Hans! Two million! exclaimed the front seat passenger to the owner and driver, Hans Jörg von Gemmingen Hornberg. His 2014 Model S had become the first electric vehicle to drive two million kilometers or more than 1.2 million miles. The car could have traveled from the Earth to the Moon and back twice, then circled the equator 11 times. The journey wasn't entirely seamless though. I mean, this was an, an old Tesla Model S and it certainly had its fair share of faults. Most of the new ones don't have these faults and those things have been fixed. However, this particular car had its share of repairs, including several battery and motor replacements. A handful of gas powered cars have driven farther. Most of all, a 1966 Volvo that did 3 million miles over five decades. But in general, a, a gasoline powered car is only gonna last you on average around 170,000 miles. That's actually the fleet average. Such fantastic mileages are becoming far easier to accomplish for ordinary commuters if they buy an electric car. On a technological level, it's possible that we're not far from a time when nobody would flinch at an EV with as much mileage as von Gemmingen Homburg's that is, unless car companies themselves get in the way, intentionally, possibly. Unlike gas-powered engines, which are made up of thousands of parts that shift against each other, causing friction to make heat, a typical EV has only a few dozen moving parts. That means less damage, less wear and tear, less maintenance, less cost. It makes it easier and cheaper to keep a car on the road, well past the 180,000 mile average lifespan of a gas powered vehicle. And EVs are only getting better. Battery technology is getting better. Battery packs now are lasting far longer than they did only a matter of years ago. There are certain technologies that are coming down the pipeline that will get us toward that million mile EV, said Scott Morn a civil and environmental engineer at UC Berkeley. That many miles would cover the average American driver for 74 years. 74 years. You'd likely be dead before your EV stopped going. The first EV you buy could be the last car you ever need to purchase. Now, of course, I mean, people will probably buy new cars in the future, but a lot of people think that eventually that will change and we'll be driving around in robo taxis and Honestly, we won't even know what we're in. We'll just be sitting there on our laptops or watching TV or being entertained. Anyhow, gas cars are already astonishingly durable, but not as much as EVs. Now, in theory, you can just keep on repairing your gasoline or petrol diesel powered car. But after they get to be about 12 to 15 years old, major problems such as a shot engine or a broken transmission are often not worth the cost of repair. That's what happened to me with my last internal combustion engine car that I scrapped. It was a Mitsubishi Magna. And once it hit around 260,000 kilometers, not that much, it needed a new engine. And it wasn't really worth the price of what the car was worth. So I had it scrapped. Even without problems, a newer car is likely to have much better mileage than an older one, making a trade-in appealing. EVs are still so new that few of them are a decade old, meaning we don't know exactly how long they will last, but we do know that more and more Tesla vehicles, particularly Tesla Model 3s, are lasting for hundreds of thousands of miles without any significant repairs being needed. The ones that do exist though, give us some sense of what you can expect. Several older Teslas and Nissan Leafs have topped 300 and now 400,000 miles as did the first three batteries in von Gemmingen Homburg's Million Miler. 
His first Tesla, a Roadster purchased in 2009, had itself traveled more than 400,000 miles. The biggest factor in EV longevity is the batteries, just like those in a smartphone. They degrade over time. A battery might lose one or 2% of its maximum range every year. That does slow down eventually though, and it depends on how it's used. Meaning that after 15 years, a car's range might have slipped from 300 miles to 210 miles per charge. Repairing a car's battery is difficult. Um, it's certainly far from impossible. You can get replacements, which are actually relatively affordable, often half the price of the original OEM battery pack. You can even get them fixed. So there's different options if a battery cell was to fail. You can often just get that individual cell replaced or repaired. Auto Pacific said that many EV warranties today will cover replacements to a battery for eight years, 100,000 miles of driving. Quite a long time. And the, the thing worth, worth mentioning here, people don't often talk about this. Batteries are considered due for replacement once they've dipped below 70% of their original capacity. So basically, um, if you're, say for example, your Tesla battery has less than 70% of its original capacity after you've driven your 160,000 miles, Tesla will replace it. Batteries today are expected to take far longer to lose that much of their maximum charge though potentially 300,000 miles or more. In fact, there are some EVs, like I said, with well over 300,000 miles that actually still have 85% of their original battery capacity. The lifespan though should only continue to improve. Batteries are one of the most active areas in EV development. Prices are plummeting, which will make battery replacement more feasible, simpler, cheaper, easier. And as the range of new EV batteries keeps going up, longevity will also obviously benefit. Some EV batteries, including the one in the Tesla Model 3 standard range, can already last for 500,000 miles on the road, Mayara said. One Chinese manufacturer recently announced the battery warrantied for nearly 1 million miles. Now that's Cato. They are actually the biggest battery supplier in the world, and they are also the number one supplier to Tesla. More Teslas have Cato batteries than any other brand of battery. So you can almost be certain that one million mile battery from Cato will be in Tesla's within the next few years. And even more durable battery designs are coming out from other manufacturers as well. A researcher at Tesla has tested a battery that he says can drive for 4 million miles or roughly 100 years under the right conditions. Now, of course, how long a car can keep running is not just how long somebody wants to drive it. EVs are more high tech than gas cars and standard improvements, longer range, faster charging, a better touchscreen, infotainment system, improved autopilot features. Some of these things would probably compel people to want to buy a new model, but they could still hand that model on that they had down to their kid, you know, some new driver, for example. Keep in mind as well as that, batteries are often repurposed. Um, some batteries that have been in buses and various different kinds of uh, vehicles like that, they have a second life which then they used as energy storage for backup solar, for example. At some point, each successive model of car though, won't be all that much better than the last. Do I need a slightly better sensor so that the windshield wipers work slightly better when it rains, as Lauren McDonald, an EV consultant, put it? Maybe I don't. With continued battery improvements, more drivers may opt to stick with an older car rather than buy a new one a decade old EV that can go 400 miles on a single charge instead of its initial 500 miles will be sufficient for most drivers. Now, of course, other things will affect vehicles, things like body deterioration and rust, um, you know, plastic de deterioration as well. But those are the kind of things that most people probably would expect to see in a car once it's 20 or so years old. That said, a lot of cars now are using more and more aluminium which obviously doesn't really rust. The longevity of EVs and any appetite for new cars, says the Atlantic, might help address one of the primary complaints with these cars, that their sticker prices are too high for the typical American household. That said though, within the past few months, EV prices on average actually come down to be on parity with gasoline powered vehicles. So if they last twice as long or more, and the price is equivalent or about the same, then you would expect that more and more intelligent people would be buying EVs instead of gasoline powered vehicles.
Used cars, which will continue to work well while requiring fewer repairs, will open up the EV revolution to much of the United States and Europe and Australia and most of the world. A used Tesla can already be purchased for roughly $20,000. We have to think about how we design these vehicles, not for the first owner, but for the third, the fourth, the fifth owner. I just made a video, guys, on someone who purchased a Tesla Model S for $9,400 at auction. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. He washed it, he cleaned it, replaced the fuse for $150, and uh, it was driving perfectly. Even if many people are content with driving the same EV for decades, car companies may try to stop them. Tesla, Ford, and other auto manufacturers will need people to buy new EVs, well, I don't know about Tesla, with robo-taxis, they may be moving away from that, but they may well create incentives for people to buy new vehicles. In the EV age, car companies are acting more like tech companies and bringing more software to their cars than ever. The entire automotive industry could follow an adoption and replacement cycle a lot like that of an iPhone. It used to be common to buy a new iPhone every couple of years for a faster processor, better camera, and larger screen. Now the iPhone 15 it's not really all that different to an iPhone 12. But people do, of course, constantly buy new phones from Apple. The old ones are expensive or difficult to repair, and with every software update, seem to slow down just a bit more until the devices are no longer eligible for updates at all. Whereas Apple commands a ton of brand loyalty and a dominant hold on smartphone sales, causing a car's battery or motor to degrade faster, would be a great strategy for losing customers. Carmaker's approach may not resemble planned obsolescence so much as planned improvements, said McDonald, making older hardware incompatible with software updates or other new functions. Tesla's autopilot, for example, is only compatible with vehicles built after September of 2014, though that is now 10 years ago. Newer updates to the feature don't work with older cars and that lack more advanced sensors and cameras. Yeah, it, you know, they don't work so well. Car companies may be able to ensnare people in software and gadget ecosystems, just like Apple does. As Ford, GM, Tesla, and other automakers sell home charging systems and other energy products, car owners might have to upgrade their vehicles to keep up. It's a sort of capture akin to how even if you don't want to buy the new iPhone, you might pay for upgraded iCloud storage so you don't run out of memory. Or buy an Apple Watch to check your iMessages. Now, how could um, car companies do something similar to what Apple's doing? The bigger concern is that the same battles over the right to repair an iPhone are also coming to cars, says The Atlantic. Even though EVs require fewer repairs, they aren't maintenance free. And right now, most EV repairs can be done only by manufacturers and their retailers. Any mechanic can fix pretty much any traditional car, but EVs require specialized parts that are more difficult to come by and to understand how they work. Whether automakers will make the spare parts and technical knowledge needed to fix EVs available to independent repair shops is uncertain. Maybe they kind of intentionally not do that so that you'll be more likely to buy a new car. Tesla has already faced class action antitrust lawsuits, alleging that the company maintains an unlawful monopoly over maintenance and replacement parts. But a judge dismissed those suits and a lot of Tesla customers are saying that hasn't been their experience at all. In fact, far from it. And to Tesla's credit, I mean, they're the company that don't require you to service your vehicle in order to maintain your warranty. They're the only company actually in the world that does that. Now, what one expert said was this. What I foresee is that with newer vehicles, the ability for an individual to repair it themselves is becoming less certain. Longevity is not just a bonus to EVs. It's central to their promise. Cars that spend more years on the road mean less carbon from the manufacturing process less mining for battery minerals, and less scrap metal. And as well, even after a second life, battery packs are extremely valuable, even if they are dead. Those minerals in that battery pack are worth incredible amounts of money, even recycled. More used vehicles that cycle through more owners will mean the same. If car companies continue to act more like tech companies, as their products become more like tech gadgets, an entire avenue of their green potential could kind of be closed off. Now guys, the truth is here, EVs 
uh, of course, the future. And a lot of the media is trying to ignore the fact that an electric car will last three times as long on average versus a gasoline powered vehicle, or at least twice as long. It requires far less maintenance, far less cost. It doesn't need oil changes. It doesn't need all the kinds of spark plugs and new timing belts. And in addition to that, the running costs are extraordinarily low. Now, I think it's only a matter of time here before the industry begins to realize that actually selling EVs is bad for them because they're going to be selling a lot less cars. As these EVs last twice as long, in some cases three times as long, their sales will, well, unquestionably decline. So that pie becomes a zero-sum game. That zero-sum game starts to shrink. The amount of cars that can be sold worldwide will shrink from about 75 million today to possibly as low as something like 25 million by 2040. So who is going to be left? If a car company is selling predominantly internal combustion engine cars and most people want EVs, well, I'd say they're toast, they're finished. So the question is, which companies will be finished first? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.